Hey guys, I'm Matt with Mr. Matt Woodworks and today I want to talk about regret and a whiskey barrel table. So what could regret and this table have in common, I, I didn't film any of the process, like none of it at all. <laughs> it was one of those projects where as I, as I got into it, I thought, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know what I was thinking. I, I didn't think that it would be film worthy. Uh, once I got the table top done and actually attached to the barrel and I put it on for the first time, I had that immediate feeling of, oh, this is definitely something that should have been documented a lot better. So here we are the day before its delivery, and I'm going to uh, just briefly go over what I did with this for my own personal um, uh, personal documentation, I guess. I <laughs> This really isn't going to help you guys. This is more for me just to look back on and go, oh, yeah, I did that thing that one time. Um so yeah, this uh, we've got an oak top to match the oak Jack Daniels barrel underneath. It was milled down from two quarter, or excuse me, milled down from eight quarter to six quarter to get this. Now this was my first time uh, using a circle cutting jig. So I made one. This was a piece of quarter inch plywood from another project that I happen to have. I've always wanted to make one, but just never had a need to. So I didn't. And I didn't film that process of making it. I did everything I'd seen in other YouTube videos to make it happen, and it worked. The only caveat that I had, or the only thing that I would do different, is the, uh, the little center pin, the hole that you uh, um, make for your, your pin to go through. Uh, you need to make sure that the pin is the exact same width as the hole. If there's any play or wiggle room, that will transfer into your piece. So, uh, spoiler alert, this is the second circle cutting jig that I made. Because the first one, the hole was just a little bit too big. And as I was going deeper and deeper through this router cutting situation... I noticed that my cuts weren't lining up right. So when I swapped it out, um, made a hole that was the same width as the pin that went in the middle, uh, everything came out just the way that it would or should have. Yeah, from there, getting this, this glass fitted and in place wasn't too terrible. Um, got the glass cut at a glass cutting place. I've, I saw some other videos on YouTube with people that showed you how to do it yourself it required a couple extra tools um, that I didn't really see myself needing beyond this one project. So I thought, let's just do it the right way, get a nice clean edge on this thing. Uh, nothing's going to have any chance of any chips or dings or anything like that. It all worked out. Now, it all working out. The last, uh, the last bit to this whole puzzle, where did my piece go? So the hardest part about this entire process was adding a bracket to keep the tabletop attached to the barrel. I saw some other videos where people had used uh, like a square kind of bracket that fit the circle of the, the top. And then, you know, they, they went in through the sides of that to attach the tabletop. The square thing underneath it just didn't really look great, uh, in my opinion. Um, if you were any distance away from it, you could kind of, kind of see it. And I, I just thought it was a little bit of an eyesore. Uh, so what I came up with were some brackets that would fit, uh, flush to the edge of the barrel and then, uh, some, uh, threaded inserts that were on the bottom of the tabletop that you could screw in through the bottom of the bracket. This is where things, this is where all of that footage could have been helpful. I didn't, haven't seen anybody do it this way. So I had to figure it out. But if you look at this, if it's at 90 degrees, it needed to fit the profile of the barrel. 
The top of the barrel also had a metal ring around it, so there needed to be a cutout. I don't know if you can really see that on here or not. There had to be a cutout here uh, that went in a little bit further than the bottom half. The barrel is also rounded, so there had it had to match the roundness in this direction. And then through here, this had to be cupped out with <laughs> with that lip in the middle. Uh, this was insanely tricky to figure out. I couldn't figure out with all the tools in my shop a way to set up a jig to make this cut repeated uh, or to, to do a repeating version of this cut to make things trickier around the surface of the barrel. Uh, it's not perfectly circle. So when I got this little prototype done, it fit in one spot. And when I made the next one to uh, to match this one, it didn't fit anywhere else around the barrel. So I had to do each one to fit the exact certain spot of the barrel. Um, and then within that, the angle of the, the, the metal ring that goes around is different from the wood that this part is pressing on, into underneath. It's a barrel, so it's, it's curving out. You know, there's no consistent straight angles anywhere. It's curved in this dimension and in this dimension with a step. Uh, so I basically had to do a lot of trial and error to get this part figured out using a, uh, a grinder, flap wheel, um, different sanders, uh, gouges, chisels. Um, these were the biggest part, just four of these little blocks of wood were the biggest part of this entire project. Um, and if we're being completely honest, uh, I was definitely having one of those, or several of those moments where I just wanted to quit woodworking altogether. Like, this is so dumb. What am I, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, but once I finally, you know, pushed through uh, and got these things attached, it was, it was all worth it. And I was actually very, very pleased with, that, with how it turned out. Um, figuring out the order of operations to, uh, to get the holes in place um, for these, I thought I'll just drill through the back. When I drilled through the back and thought I had it even on the front, this little dot or this where it, where it came out in the front, way lower than this side. So I know I'm going to have to set up a jig to make all of these, um, the, uh, you know, make all of them look consistent and even. And to do that, uh, I had to do all of the drilling before I did any of this shaping. So that was the whole thing. Um, then once, uh, once all that was in, you had these, these holes, there's four of them. Can't see here, but it's a hole here, hole there, you know, and I wanted to not have these ugly hole things in the front. So I thought, oh, I'll just get some little like buttons, um, you know, uh, little wood plug buttons, but you can't plug holes that are on this thing with those buttons. So I ended up just sticking some dowels in there, cutting them as best I could flush. And then, um, while they were attached to the barrel, sanding everything back till it was smooth. Uh, I had stained, uh, stained these and, you know, put some finish on the sides. Uh, after I sanded these all flush, I had to go back and do some touch up, uh, staining touch up with the, the final, uh, clear coat on it. Um, and that was, that was that, uh, the other tricky part was getting the, getting everything lined up. Like I said, none of these fit exactly the same anywhere else on the barrel. So when I put the tabletop on with the threaded inserts, this tabletop also, this is the only orientation that it's going to work. Um, so I had to get, get these in place, get the table on, then go underneath with a punch and, uh, mark my holes going through the bottom of this. Once that was done, um, take the table back off, add my threaded inserts and uh, it was good to go. And then on there, on the bottom of the table, there's, each piece is uh, coated with four little dots, three little dots, two little dots, or one dot for where it lines up with the, uh, the, the bracket. So yeah, that was my tabletop experience. It was, um, you know, like I said, first time cutting a circle top that went smoothly. Once I figured out that one little, uh, once I figured out that one little extra issue with the router cutting jig and yeah, the, you know, I, I don't know if I'll ever have to make something like this again, but if uh, someone brings me a barrel, 
uh, again, I would be happy to do it and maybe I'll even film it next time. <laughs> so if you're ever having feelings of should I or shouldn't I, it's always better to regret something that you have done versus something that you haven't. Um, take some chances, live your life, get outside of your comfort zone, even if it's just a baby step outside of it, and document everything. Thank you. <laughs>